Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to day three of Caravan and Camping Week. I'm Stuart from the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia, and this is a little studio that we've set up to bring you these videos. Um, earlier today at midday, we spoke to Sondra from the Air Peninsula, and she took, spoke to us about the different places to see and where to stay on the Air Peninsula. We also talked to Caroline from the Riverland, and we did the same thing. We actually covered um, lots of different tourism operators and experiences that's included in the new road, tread, uh, road trip ready brochure. But uh, Caravan and Camping Week, there's, there's three parts to it. The first part is there's around about 40 plus caravan and camping dealers and retailers on sale during this week. They all started on sale on Monday and they will finish on Saturday, but some of them will also open on the Sunday. So we'll actually tell you who those stores that are opening Sunday later on, just to actually remind you. So that's the first part of it. And actually, if you go to the website that Georgie's got up there, you can actually view all the, all the different members that are on sale. And I think it's got some details about one of the, the specials that they're running. The second part of this is the new Road Trip Ready brochure. And this is a new brochure that the Caravan and Camping Industries Association has put out. Um, it's done in conjunction with around about 50 tourism operators from all the regions around South Australia. We've also had help from the Tourism Ministry Council of South Australia and also the South Australian Tourism Commission has put in some funding as well. So this is a brand new brochure. It's only been received uh, yesterday and today in all the member businesses. So if you're wanting a copy, there's only limited copies. Um, so just phone ahead to your closest caravan or camping store that's an association member. So you have to look for this logo. Um, you can find a list of all the members on our website and I'll get Georgia to put up our uh, URL for the association's website. Um, in this guide, as I said, there's um, lots of information. So every, every region has two or three pages on it and it lists different options about what you can do and where you can stay. And for instance, on this page here, it talks about all the different options that you can use to go away caravan and camping. So it take, talks about a swag, a tent, a rooftop camper, soft floor tent trailer, a hard floor camper trailer that we've already spoken about with Bailey, uh, a hybrid camper, an off-road caravan, caravan and a motorhome. So that just this is just an example of on the pages. This is a really good guide if you've never done caravan or camping before. Um, or you haven't done it for a long time and you want a little bit more information, you might be wanting some information about what to ask for in, uh, when you're buying your first caravan, for instance. So this is a really good guide to so go in and grab a copy. So that's the second part of Caravan Camping Week. And the third part are these videos. So every day we post up a video in the morning and we give you a bit of um, advice about what's happening during the day. At midday, we talk to the tourism, uh, the regional tourism managers that are listed uh, in the Road Trip Ready Guide, and they talk about all those places. And we also have this time slot at 6 p.m., which is when we talk to the experts in the in the industry, and we show you some pre-recorded videos. And we have those people live online to, to answer any questions. So they've been going really well. Today, I'm going to be talking to Mike Griggs about how to pack your caravan. And that's uh, in particular about where you put lightweight stuff, medium weight stuff and, and heavy stuff around the van, but where to pack them. And we've also got Brett from Dave Benson Caravans and he's going to be talking about what a, a pop top caravan is. Um, and there's a few questions there that we're going to ask him. Now, during the video with Mike Griggs about how to pack your caravan and also the video with Brett about what a pop top caravan is, if you've got any questions, just type them up in the actual comments and Georgie will try to bring them across and, and we'll try to answer those on the run. Um, but if you've got any other good advice um, during the video, just, just put it up there as well. So the first video we're gonna um, show you uh, is the how to pack a car in. Unfortunately, Mike Griggs has a few technical issues. He can't get on just yet. So I'll take this segment from now. And if we're, if we're fortunate enough to get him on, then we will. But we have got a, a few questions here as well. Um, about packing your van um, that if Mike Griggs can't come on, I'll get Brett to answer them as well. So let's first of all watch the video about how to pack your caravan. Hi everyone, welcome to 
Caravan and Camping Week. I'm from the Caravan and Camping Industries Association office and we're here to shoot some videos about the different types of product you can take away plus also some hints and tips. And I'm here with Mike Griggs. Mike Griggs is about oh, 120 years old yeah, you're right. and you've been caravanning a few years? Over 40 years. 40 yeah. years. So you go away a lot and you've fixed up lots of vans. You've seen a lot of stuff in your time. And we have. Yeah, we have. So we're going to talk about how to pack your van and where to put um, items of different weight. So if you stand back, Mike, we've raided Office Works this morning. We've stuck all this coloured card on there. And you're not colour blind, are you, Mike? No. no? <laughs> all right, well, that helps. So we're going to just talk to you about the different weight of items in these different colours. So, so blue here represents light stuff. Actually, Georgia, can you check the texture? All right. Oh, I've got the texture. All right. I know Mike's a bit old, so... I'm going to write light on there. So we'll put the light stuff, Mike. You can see on the end, either ends of the van and just over in the middle there. So why do we put light stuff on the ends of the van? Well, we don't want, we don't want excessive weight at the rear and we don't, definitely don't want excessive weight at the front because uh, we don't want to increase the ball weight too much. So we want to keep the van like a boat. We want to keep the van balanced. All right, and the, van, and, and the actual manufacturers of the van take into account and the chassis builder where they put the axle to try to get a nice balanced weight over yeah, the van. They do that to, to work out a ball weight yep, that's 10% yep. or a little bit more. So the, so the van tows, when it's empty, right. tows fairly right. And the idea for the customer is to keep that, keep that ratio correct. So by putting the light stuff on either ends, it doesn't really muck around with how the chassis designer really designed right. the, the chassis for the weight. So we've got the light stuff on the ends. Yep. Now, let's go to the yellow stuff. That's well, ma main medium weight? Pardon? Medium weight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your plates, you, you usually use plastic plates and cups and things like that because you don't want, you want something that's light up there and if your weight is too heavy at the top, it'll cause the caravan to roll. So the, the weight is down. Yeah. Down to, to and the and floor noticed, and the light stuff's up there. I the medium stuff. And that could be tea towels and... Yeah, so the medium yellow stuff still kind of in the middle of the van. Yeah. All right, so let me just write... Medium. So this is medium, medium weight stuff. And now, Mike, let's turn to the, let me just grab that. Let's now go to the red. So what does red represent? Mike? Well, that, the heaviest things you're carrying, your water tank will be uh, probably just in front of the axle or around about near near the axle. Yep. So that, that's a heavy that's a heavy item. And then if you've got like Oz pigs and, and stuff that you want to take in in plastic crates, you put them over the floor in the middle or over the axle. If you go too far for the front, you'll increase the ball weight too heavy. If you go to the rear of the van, you'll decrease the ball weight and cause the van to sway. Okay, so red is heavy. I won't drop the lid this time. <laughs> so heavy stuff over the axle, yep. so you're not really affecting the weight of the van either end. Yeah, you're it's trying again, to keep it, it's, you're trying, trying to keep, keep a ball weight of around about what it started at. You yep. don't really want to increase that ball weight to a to a great degree. All right. So here's I'm going to give you a pop quiz. Where would you pack a slab of beer? <laughs> in the fridge in the back of the car. Probably a stupid yeah, question. Gonna, yeah, so yeah, let's in the ask fridge you in the back one. of the okay. car. So or where? on the floor. No, on the floor of the van, you know. Around cast the red? Yeah, yeah. Around, around the red area. Right. Anything so here's another question. Like I know blokes pack every single tool they can think of. So where do I pack my compressor? Probably in the boot. In the boot. Okay, so let's go towards need, the boot. Maybe something like that. So, so the compressor jack. is in there. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So how about all your tools and things? Well... You don't take too many tools. The thing you do is to cut the weight down on that sort of thing. But you just pick out There's the essentials. There's a really good hint right there. Pick out the essentials. Yeah, pick out the essentials. So tool-wise, I mean, I used to shove them on the boot. I'd, I'd hate to think the weight of the boot on my camper yeah. trailer actually. A good idea. Away. A good idea is to take all the gear. We've done it here. Is to take all the gear out of your boot and weigh it with a bathroom scale. So I've seen people with floor jacks and all sorts of things in the boot, and. Most boots have got a load limit of 30 to 50 kilograms written on them. Some people have 150 or 200. You've got to remember the, the, the amount you put in the boot 
is probably going to increase the ball weight. So if the ball weight's 275 and you put 100 in there, you've now gone 375 on the ball. You don't want that. Yeah, so while you do usually pack your tools in the front boot, tools that you need straight away, I would recommend, and I'm not the expert you are, but I'd recommend that you put the tools you need kind of regularly in the front. The tools that you don't need regularly, and, and if you can get into your caravan quite easily, why not pack them inside, again, in a couch, skins, around that, yeah, that, around that, that heavy that red yeah, area that's right, that's over correct. the axle. Yep, that's so correct. we've talked about that now. After all of that, when you when you're travelling and you've got your water tank, so how much does a water tank usually hold? Well, they're 90 litres, and most okay. caravans have got two 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 water tanks. Yeah, and so some like caravans may even have a, kilos of weight. Yes, and may and some caravans will have a grey water tank. Okay. So if you go into national parks and that, they want you to take your wastewater out. So which is great. So yeah. when we're talking about water. Should we fill the water tanks before we go away? Or should we travel with them empty? Depends where you travel. Uh, I suggest you, you start off empty, and then if you're going to go to places like, uh, are you going to go out back, then maybe when you, before you leave that last town, you fill that last night stop, you fill your tanks then. Okay. Uh, if not, you know, most caravan parks have got mains water and that, and you may not need to travel with it, water tanks with any water in at all. So you're saying if you can travel, when you leave home to go on a trip, try to leave them empty if you can, depending yep. on where you go. Yep. If you're going somewhere straight away where, where you're remote, obviously you have to fill it full of water. But you just talked about a caravan having, you know, two water tanks, that's 90 litres each, that's 180 litres of weight. Yeah, that's right. That you may not even have to tap into. And that's so just kind of think ahead, you're saying, about yep. where you're that's going, right. where that's the gonna, last stop is. That's going to affect your fuel consumption, and if you don't need to carry it, it's like when you go through your van, you work out what trip you're going to do and what gear you need in your van. I always say a caravan needs two doors, one on the uh, one on the side, the curb side, for the wife to pack it, and one on the other side for the man to take all the stuff out that's <laughs> not necessary. Okay, maybe the wife wants to to take out some of all the tools the blokes take. So it could be both no, that's, ways, right? No, that's not be... non-negotiable. <laughs> so anyway, so Mike, thank you so much. So we've talked about the different weights and remember blue's the light gear, medium is the yellow and red is the heavy. And I think the main thing to understand is it's the red really, that's probably the main thing. If you've got anything heavy, if you can try to pack it in the van over the axles. Now this, this kind of makeshift um, diagram we've got here is actually in the National Recreational Vehicle Towing Guide. Now, th these are very limited supply print run, but you can actually download it and go online. So if you Google the National Recreational Vehicle Towing Guide, you'll be able to find this. This, this diagram's in here, and it also talks about different um, towing accessories you can put on the tow bar and the tow ball to, to, to help with the weight. So Mike, if we've done all of this, and you connect the, the van onto the car, and the R scene of the car just sinks right down. What well, do you suggest we do? Well, we got there's different uh, components you can buy for that. There's like your weight distributing bars, which will lift the back of your vehicle. There's heavy duty coil springs you can put in your vehicle. There's airbags, all sorts of things. But you probably should contact your specialist in suspension yep. uh, to see what load you want the vehicle to carry. Uh, so the main thing is is that you can't go over the maximum tow ball capacity of your vehicle, the downward weight. That's right. Yep. So, so if you've got 300 kilograms, what we the vehicle we got behind here and the van we got here is about 225 on the ball we can't exceed that 300 right. on the ball excellent well thank you so much we've been here with mike griggs he's 120 years old 80 years experience of caravanning uh, using them towing them fixing them so thanks so much mike thank, thank you sir we just spoke about all the different weights of your equipment and where to pack it in a van now, Mike, uh, so you got a bit of an offer where uh, where people can pull up in what's this street here? Elm, if, if people come around, like to come around and bring their van around, pull up in Elm Street, uh, we'll do a free um, ball weight, uh, cool. yeah, on the on their van for them. They just need to ring up uh, and book ahead and make a time because it is a very busy workshop, and that'll give them some idea of what their van actually weighs on the ball. Okay, so they just phone ahead, book in a time. They can then pull up in the street, they can disconnect the van on the on the um, um, jockey wheel, yep. and then they'll come out and they'll actually we'll, put a, we'll, a scale underneath yep. the, the ball and we'll, and we'll wait to for check them. the ball weight so they know what the ball weight yep, is. That's right. And that really, really kind of comes off the back of talking about where to pack things on your van um, and try to how, to how to keep that that weight distributor of the van even. That's right, and it'll tell them whether they're overweight on their tow bar. As well.
Well, thanks, Mike. Before so we I, go, before we go, talk to you about, talk to you about the road trip ready guides, guide. it's a brand new brochure. They are very, they are very, um, there are um, very limited, limited quantities of these. So that's a new one that you can pick up from any of the members. From any of the members. Plus also on the back, Plus also on the back so information about, so the, information about the new Let's Go Caravan and Camping SA Club, which you can click and you can join. And there's details about that on our website and on our Facebook site as well. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Mike. No, thanks, Stuart. Well, that was a great video with uh, Mike Griggs and I. Mike Griggs' uh, father started the Mike Griggs Caravan Service Centre, then Mike took it over, and now uh, Jen and his um, son-in-law have taken the business over as well. So Mike took time to come up from his farm, and um, speaking about his farm, he's there now, and we're having a few technical problems about bringing Mike Griggs into the call. So what I will do, I've got Brett. We've got Brett on hold. Yeah, I think we've got Brett from Dave Benson Caravans. I'm going to um, hit Brett up with some questions. We'll just see if you can get him in. Hello, hello, I'm here. Okay, so we can see you, Brett. Sorry, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Really? Okay. Wait a second to see if it fixes itself. It doesn't look like it. Okay, so look, I'm going to ask you questions anyway as we go. Right. Um, so with Mike Griggs, we actually talked about where to put light things, heavy things and medium weight things, which is really good. And I think one of the things that, 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 that we really learned was about um, not to overload the boots. Oh, that's, that's one thing that I learned, don't overload the boots. Um, but I, I did receive a call once in the office about where to, well, how to take your bikes with you away on your, on, on your caravan. So. Can you tell us a little bit about how you, you can take bikes away with you? Well, there's several ways you can do it. You can go on the A-frame. So there's several sort of setups that can go on the A-frame at the front, just as long as you've got the, the turning space. And if you've got a tall box there, that generally won't work the best. But you can put them up the front, or you can connect them straight to the back of the caravan too, straight on the back wall. Um, there's actually a third way too, the bumper on the back of the caravan just above the spare wheel, you can hook them up that way too. So uh, generally lots of ways we can get the bikes onto your caravan. Okay, so apparently we can see, I can't see, but everyone else can see you, so that's a good way. Okay. Now you can put bikes on the very back of the caravan. Mm. I've actually seen there's like a strap. So I have seen sometimes when they put the bike carrier on the back, it, it can kind of get a bit of bounce in it. Yeah. But th there is a strap I've seen that I think the strap, Nicky Crickman, is to actually uh, tie it back to the van so the, so, so the bouncy stops. Is that right? Yeah, it steadies the bounce. That's right. So it just holds it more steady on the back there. All right. And, and some, of the, some of the camper trailers, you can probably get bike carriers and put them on the roof. But all this affects the actual maximum amount of weight you, you can put into your caravan. It does. You have to be cautious. Make sure you've got it all balanced correctly and make sure you stay within your weight restrictions. All right. And do, do you get many people asking about putting bike carries on there or, or, or is this something? Oh, we would. Do? Yeah, I reckon one out of every 10 we sell families. Okay. Majority of the time it's bunk vans. Yeah. Get the uh, bike carriers put on. Okay. All right. Another question we've got is about um, putting equipment in your four wheel drive. So if you're putting extra weight from your boot, into the back of the full drive. Mm -hmm. um, does that take away from the maximum towing capacity or does that weight have to be taken into account of the maximum towing capacity? Well, it does. When you buy a car, let's say a crew cab, generally they're around three and a half tonne towing. So that's going to give you a max combined towing capability of usually around six tonne. So if you're putting more weight into your car, that then lessens the amount of the weight that you can tow behind the car because it all adds up to one whole weight. Yeah. So we talked about not packing everything, like, like tools, are, tools are quite heavy, gas is heavy. Um, I know Mike talked about maybe leaving uh, on your trip with the water tank empty, depending on where you're going, mm. and then filling up at the last place you can to actually, actually get water. We also talked about some of those tools in the front pulling over the wheels. So I guess, again, it's a matter of trying not to pack everything, trying to think twice about how much weight, weight will you take. Um, That's right. And the third question, now, this comes from a little bit of experience, but we've had a couple of other questions too. Yeah. So if you're driving on lots of unsealed road and it's really rough, I want to say really rough, um, 
yeah, rough. I'm talking not not big bumps, but just constantly corrugated. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. any tips about, I guess, how to protect the gear that you pack in your van from getting, you know, bouncing around and all, and also rubbing inside. Mm. Well, you can get that sort of plastic matting, kind of like. Um, fishnet sort of looking stuff, but it's plastic. You can put that down the bottom of your cupboards and sit things on that, or you can just pack tea towels or cardboard or things for between your plates and cups and things like that. Sometimes also you can deflate the tyres just that tiny bit, which is going to soften the the way that the caravan's sitting on the corrugated road. Yeah. Now um, I did a trip once to a place called called Papunya, which I think is maybe. I don't know, 300, 400 k's northwest of Uluru, and the roads were so rough that the cans of drink that I had in the fridge, mm. they rubbed, vibrated the whole way. They actually rubbed holes into the solar can and leaked into my fridge. Right. And, yeah, and I know that somebody said you had to slip things in between those. Yeah. Sometimes pack cans in stubby coolers in the fridge so they, do, so they don't rub. And the other little trick about when you're packing your van, I learned, is that if it's going to be rough like that, just get some tape and tape the door close of your fridge. Because when mm. we stopped, we had cheese on the floor, olive jar of olives, we were just the whole content of the fridge popped out. So just think ahead, as Brett said, let the tyres down a bit, um, pack things nice and tight, put them on those not non-slip mats mm. that um, we're talking about. That's and also right. just think about things j jiggling around and maybe just taping that fridge door closed. That's from my own experience. But I'm pretty sure lots of other people have ha have actually done those tricks as well. Yeah. So, Brett, look, I really appreciate you coming on a little bit earlier answering those questions. I know we've got years of experience with talking to people. Mm. So I can only give you my kind of limited experience, but talking to someone like, like you is great. So... Thank you so much. Now, that towing guide, uh, if you wanted to have a look at it, it is the website is caravantowingguide.com.au and there'll actually be a link on there to actually download it. Now, it actually looks like this. Um, there is very limited supplies of these. They, they are printed nationally. All the different state caravan camping industries associations chip into this and they uh, send them around. So it's only, only a few copies around. Again, if you want these, I'd we'll probably hit up the tow bar guys first that are members and then talk to the caravan dealers or the caravan service and, and uh, crash repairs because these are out there, but they're very few. But you can download a copy online from the uh, in a um, PDF form, and these are really good. And that little diagram about the, the weights, where to pack things, that's all in there as well. It also talks about different hitches and things. So definitely try to get a copy of this or at least download a copy. So look. Thanks, Mike Griggs, for that. We, we appreciate yeah. your time. Um, but we've got Brett. So what we're going to do now, before we actually go on any further, if you've got any questions about packing your van that we've just covered, just put your, put your comments up. And George is saying that she would love to know about where you are. So if, if anyone's listening, just comment where you are if you're away or maybe even comment about what type of caravan or camper trail you've got or what you're thinking about buying. So And also share it because... Probably around about 2,000 people will actually watch this video, but we want to get as many people as we can, especially new people coming into the market to watch it. So, the towing weight's out of the way. We're now going to talk to Brett. Yeah, <laughs> hello Brett. again. And um, so I was down at Dave Benson Caravans maybe two weeks ago shooting a video, and we were down the back and we shot a video on a pop up. Now, Dave Benson Caravans have got lots of different caravans, and lots of different models to actually choose from. But this is just one type that we actually went in there to film. And we filmed about a pop-top caravan. So if you don't really know what a pop-top is or you're not really sure about the the advantages, this video should cover everything. So we'll actually play this video now and we'll come back to you after. Hi, I'm Stuart from the Caravan and Camping Industries Association of South Australia and welcome to Caravan and Camping Week. This is another little video where we're highlighting the different types of products you can take away and use on a caravan and camping trip. And I'm with Brett from Dave Benson Caravans. Hey, on, Brett. Thanks Good. for having Good. us. Thanks, Stuart. Good. This, this is a fantastic place. I'm always impressed when I come down here. It's big. So we're here to talk about a pop top. Mm. Now, pop tops, you know... The, I don't see many of them around anymore, I thought, but, you know, so sales-wise, I mean, how much of the market is a pop-top kind of... 
make up. I'd, I'd have to say, caravan. I'd have to say I disagree. I reckon at least 30, 30 percent would have to be. So there's still a popular. That, yeah. Excellent. Well, let's Absolutely. go through what kind yeah. of makes a pop top a pop top for mm. people that don't know, and that may lead us into <clears> why they are actually popular. So, when we turn around and look at the van here, I mean, so if you look pop behind, top is, pop top, so you've got the roof part that's going to be able to extend from the caravan. And that extends so, about what? Yeah, so foot, foot and a half, foot and a half you'll manage to lift it up higher. So yep. as you can see here to the canvas section. So just above the awning, it pops up. Pops up. Yeah. And what, when, what's the point of all that? What's, why don't you just have a solid, solid side wall in there? So the point will be maybe people don't want to have their caravan parked out the front. They don't want it sitting out the front of the house. They want to stick it in their garage. This will lower down. So you oh, can stick it into in. more confined spaces. Yep. Also, too, behind a car, it's a more compact unit. There's less wind drag. There's better fuel efficiency. It's actually cheaper to travel Australia. Oh, so the wind kind of travels over the car a bit more and over the van yeah, a bit easier. Yeah, because the caravan's tucking behind yep. the car more okay, and it's lighter weight. And so, so this pop-top style makes a lighter <coughs> van generally because there's less. the walls are lower on the outside and there's it less does. walling yeah. as such? It is. There's less walling. It's canvas that's made up, so canvas is clearly lighter than fiberglass or composite panel or whatever yep. the caravan's made of. Um, so it creates a lighter unit and hull. So what I'm impressed with as well is that you can still put out a rollout awning on there. So I'm not sure if everybody knew that mm. these rollout awnings are really popular. So you can see. So that just to attaches use. to the side, yep. but then the top bracket attaches the top of the, yeah. the top of the awning. Well, so you, you can still pull it all out. out. You can bring the legs out, and you can have the whole annex completely out. Because yeah, that awning, doesn't sorry. that doesn't really add any weight to the roof, then, does it? Really, because it's no, all connected to the side of the wall. It's connected to the caravan. All right. Yeah. And what's the top made of? Is it? Uh, so the top's fiberglass. Okay. It's a fiberglass roof. Yep. Yeah. So really easy to do. It's lightweight because it's just a fiberglass roof with a bit of canvas around the sides, so we just simply lift it up. Unique thing with these, how they stay lower, so you'll notice that the air conditioning's not on the roof. The air conditioning in this one's actually under the bed and it's a ducted system, so it's not a heavy roof. It's also a lower roof because there's no air conditioner on the roof. Well, a lot of people go away free camping, so they want to stay on the side of a river, they want to stay in a, in a bush camp site, so mm. places where there's no power. Can you still put solar panels on the We roof? can fill it with solar. Look, it will make it a little bit heavy, yeah. but I, c I can show you in a moment. It's really easy with the, up and down. the arm system that they've done, the mechanism. It's, yeah. it's lightweight. It's easy to do. Otherwise, if you wanted more panels, I guess you could put it external on the floor. You can. Wanting and it's good sun. too, because sometimes you want to park your caravan in the shade, and then if you've, got to, if you've got to chase the sun solar, you can put the solar out in the sun, have the yeah. caravan in the shade. So. Who, who does a pop top suit like what type of user or <coughs> I would say who it suits is maybe someone that doesn't have the big four wheel drive they could have like a SUV possibly a RAV4 or four territory something like that that's okay. got a 2122 two tonne capacity even two tonne this one is like 17 1700 kilos fully loaded so well under two tonnes. So your normal car can just tow this. You don't have to be a serious big four-wheel That's about driver. the weight of my camper trailer. Yeah. My why not camper trailer. So, yeah, well, yeah, so this particular pop top's very unique because Jergens, it's made different. So there's no wooden beams or anything inside the wall. This is like a foam one whole piece. Um, like sandwich panel. Like is that sandwich what panel. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's foam in the inside. So it's extremely lightweight. It's unique. And this is a single axle, but can you get this in a in like a larger version? Or we like can. We do other models. Um, so basically, we'll tailor it. To, we've got another one over here, even smaller than this. We'll tailor it to what you need, okay. whether it be large or small. So you can kind of get a pop top on most size vans, then, would you say? Or is a certain size it gets too long, and then they yeah, go to a roof. There's, yeah. Okay. So if it gets too long, you'll just end up going back to a full caravan. So this is lot, nice and light, quite manoeuvrable, easy to put in a garage or a carport. Easy. Um, I'm 6'4", and you must be at least 6'1", 6'2". 6'2", yeah. So we're tall. Yeah. But uh, what I do like about this is that you can still stand up in them, which is yeah. great. Yeah. And um, the, the, the canvas pop-top part, I'm just kind of trying to figure out in my terms, there aren't cupboards there, so when I'm inside, it feels like I've got more headroom left and right around mm. the van instead of walking down a corridor of cupboards. Yeah. So for us tall 
gifted high people. <laughs> it kind of works quite well. So let's go in and show how the pop top goes up and down. Sure, let's do it. So here we are inside. And watch this, this is how easy it is. You basically just grab this arm. So if I was to pull that down, that's how easy it is, one hand. You saw that there was no effort in that. You got these clips, they just clip into the ceiling. Is Other way, way around. You pack it down when you're yeah, so this yep. is to pack it down. Other way is so here we've pulled up. You come in here, you want to set it up. You basically just lift it up, clip it in, lock it in, you're done. So that was one hand. So anyone can easily do that. And an easier way too, you just lift the bed up so you can get more under it. So there's two of those, one each end. One each end. Yep. You just pop them down. And now I did hear when you did that, there's a gas strut just outside the door, so you, it's kind of gas strut assisted. Is that Either what you call it? That's right. Yeah. So that's, so why, that's, that's so easy. why it's so easy. And you got windows there to so get plenty of ventilation. Ventilation or close it up, and then heating and cooling, ducted under the bed. Yeah. So. So you're six two, we said. Six And two. you still got about another around. six yeah. inches. You know, yeah. You're not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Brett for showing us what a pop top is. Obviously, uh, there are certain types of users that it would see, and mm. I think the price point's really good. So, everyone, that's a pop top, and that's one of our product type profiles that we're doing for Caravan and Camping Week. So, thank you very much. And just before we go, I just want you to keep an eye out for the new Let's Go Caravan and Camping SA Club, which you can all join and become members of. So keep an eye out for that. There'll be more information on our Facebook page and in our email list and our website. So thanks so much, Brett. Great. Thanks. Cheers. Hey, we were just on the way out and we thought we'd stop because Brett's got a new brand to Dave Benson Caravans that we want to quickly show you and talk about some of the specials for Caravan Camping Week. So tell me a bit about it, Brett. Absolutely. So I've actually got two new brands. I've got Elite Caravan, so that's more the high-end, prestigious, top-of-the-range, full off-road caravans or extreme off-road. Sounds good. And then I've got Network RVs just to hit the floor here too. That so is new. I, I hadn't seen that brand completely before. Completely Australian-made, high quality, all of the features, but I believe you need to come in and have a look because they're price advantaged there. Okay, so they're a pretty sharp price for sharp Caravan price. and Camping Week, new product here, so come on down and uh, ask for Brett, he'll probably show what, you what coffee. I'll, what I'll be doing too is everyone that comes through the door on the sale week, I'll have a lucky dip. So you're going to win up to $5,000 worth of discounts in this lucky dip. I'll have hundreds of checks in the box. Everyone is a winner and all of the vans are on discount. Do we get a free coffee? Sure do. And sausage sizzle. I'm here. Sausage Beer. sizzle. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. All Thanks, right, Brett. cheers. All right, cheers. I don't know what happened at the end of that video, but uh, Brett, thank you so much. That that was really useful to learn about a pop top. Good. Uh, Excellent. Now, um, and of course, you've got lots of different types of RVs there, not, not only pop tops, but you just helped us out with bringing us in to film about a pop top when we saw that big new... That big van. What was that brand again that you've got in there? Uh, so Network RV. Network RV. So that looked great. So, look, I get lots of questions about uh, all types of things every day in the office. Um, so I've just jotted down three other questions that we've got. But if the viewers have got any, any other questions or because we're broadcasting this around about the time that people are you know, closing down work and driving home, if you've got questions after it's been live, still put the comments up because they'll come up and then we'll actually try to answer them for you. But Absolutely. Brett, so I've got three other questions for you, okay? One is, you talked about that you can put an air conditioner and it's installed inside instead of on the roof, was that right? That's right, yes. Can, can you put a heater in it as well, like a, a diesel gas heater? You sure can, same spot, put it under the bed somewhere there and it can be ducted out through into the caravan. You, oh, just so don't want, you don't want to put anything on the roof just because then it just gets heavier. It defeats the purpose of having a pop top. Yeah, and, and is there any advantage of, have, of having a diesel, diesel gas, a diesel heater uh, as well as the reverse cycle? Uh, well, diesel's just super efficient. It's, uh, it lasts a long time and it's very cheap to run. So um, I guess also if you're free camping and you've got limited power and you've got like a few days of of power maybe you know depending on how many batteries and solar panels it's just mm. another way to heat the van in the evening if it, if it gets a bit cool you can turn the actual diesel heater on it and heat heat the van um without having to use all your 12 volt power that you've just stored up over the day from the solar panels i guess that's right all right so tig we can put a diesel heater in there now what i was thinking when i was watching the videos about the rain so when the pop tops up 
what's the material the material around the roof there and how does it kind of perform in the rain yeah well it's fully weatherproof canvas so the the rain's not going to get in there and then also the way that it, it's set back in there the roof comes out over the edge so the water will run off further away but even if it does get on that canvas it's watertight it's not going to get in there and then when the pop top's closed in travel it's a tight sealed unit as well it's completely waterproof so the roof it kind of acts as a bit of like eaves off the side and the canvas it does is yeah because the, the canvas is further in but the and canvas the is really water. The zips are you can i mean you can open up the the um the pop top roof fence which which i love and i think to be able to have a screen door on the on the on the door a screen mm. through the airflow and then yeah. to open up those vents is a real advantage of a, of a pop top but on the inside where the zip size you've got flaps that when you close the zip the flaps come over so it also stops the wind and the rain again it does yes so that's fully watertight all right excellent all right and we're actually r ripping through these pretty quick um now the other thing is about towing so are pop tops easier to tow they are big a little, yeah. So all caravans these days are made aerodynamics, but I suppose the advantage with a pop top is it's a lighter weight caravan. It generally sits lower behind your car too, so it's getting less wind drag, coefficiency drag, because it's tucked in closer behind the car. But uh, it's, it's, they're generally lighter, a good few hundred kilos lighter than a normal caravan. So it's probably lighter. That means it's when I say easy, it's easy for the car to tow, not as in actual towing ability it's really about how how hard the car's working so it's easy for the car yes. towing because they're probably lighter and right. they are lower so there's less um wind um resistance on the front of the van spot on okay excellent oh geez i'm becoming a bit of an expert here so <laughs> hey brett thank you so much now um before we go um both uh, sorry day benton caravans are on sale as part of this um, uh, caravan and camping week. They've got plenty of deals on. I'm not sure if Brett's still doing a sausage sizzle or not. There's a few um, concerns around COVID and all the different. Yeah, so I have I have put a break to that, but I, I reckon I still will do it Friday and Saturday, but of course, with the most cleanest standards we can produce. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of worry about that. Yeah. Plus also, um, um, uh, you've got the road trip ready guide in there and you've also got copies of the almanac which there's still a few laying around for this year now thanks so much Brett. i really appreciate your time um i'll catch you around but uh, brett thanks for having us in your place to film the video and coming on this afternoon to to be live sure thanks for thanks for having me aboard easy Okay, that was Brett from Day Beds of Caravans, and thanks so much for him helping us out. Now, I've got a few notes here. So tomorrow, I will be at the Dirt Off-Road Campus up at Mount Barker in the morning at about 9.30 to do a live broadcast on Facebook to tell you what's on for the day. Um, and I'll be talking to two uh, tourism regions. I think I'm talking to the Flinders Rangers Regional Tourism Manager and the York Peninsula, so that'd be great, two fantastic places. And... Um, in the afternoon at four o'clock, not six o'clock, so we moved it to four. We're going to be talking about the different types of places you can stay. So we'll be talking about caravan parks, station stays, national parks, free camping. So we'll so we'll go over all of those. And also, we're going to be talking to Northland Caravans, where we were the other week, and we talked about a typical on-road caravan and some of the the important things that you might want to ask for the first time you're buying one. So lots of little features on the outside that uh, would, would would really come in handy when, you, when you're purchasing your first one. So I'll see you at 9.30 tomorrow from the dirt and I'll give you a rundown of the day. Thank you very much.